this is not a video that I planned on making, not a video I expected to make, and definitely not a video that I spent ages planning. Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. Guys, first things first, I mean, as always, I will welcome you back to the channel warmly with open arms. I hope you're all safe, I hope you're all well, hope you're all doing exactly what you need to do at the moment. Today's a bit of a strange video. Now, first of all, take this off, get a glove. Now this, as I've said, I don't know what I'm gonna title this video, probably something about my horrific golf game and being totally honest, where's my seven iron? Here. And being totally honest about my golf game and that since lockdown, it's been absolutely rubbish. And I'm gonna try and determine the fact why it's been rubbish. I'm gonna try and improve it hopefully a little bit, and I'm teeing off in about 20 minutes, half an hour, with Gaz outside. So I'm gonna keep the coat on, because obviously when you warm up for a round of golf, you should always, when you warm up for a round of golf, you should always kind of, um, well, not stretch like that, but you should always wear what you're gonna wear when you're playing. And obviously the first thing that comes to mind when I think about my golf game is generally the miss left. We all know it, four left! That's generally when I'm playing at my worst. And that's because at impact, the club face does that and it closes and it points left, generally sending the ball left. Because what doesn't happen and is when a lot of people hit it left, they'll actually have the face ever so slightly open, but the path will be that far from the inside. The ball will start right and hook to the left. That's called a hook. I don't hit a hook, don't hit a hook, I hit a pull hook or a pull, generally a pull hook. So that means that yes, the path's still coming from the inside a little bit too much and the club face closes. So we get a ball that starts left and goes left, just like that. That was actually a really good strike. I was pleased with that for the first swing of the day. But that's the destructive one with the irons, with the woods, with the driver, with everything. So, so I've been looking at a few of my old golf swings, in particular this one here, and you'll see that this is a mid iron. And generally when I set up, the hands are almost level with the golf ball. They're a little bit back for me. And for me, I almost, for me, whenever I've played my best golf, I've always set up with the hands forward, the shaft leaning forward, and then trying to recreate that through impact. That helps me deal off the club. It also helps me keep it square. If I was to have the handle back here or the handle square, you can see how if I release that club, the club can kind of overtake the shaft. But on that note, that's where it kind of flips over. So if I can keep my body weight, my pressure moving to the left side with a handle that's leaning forwards, generally I shouldn't hit it left. There's loads of factors that incorporate in that. But generally that's always gonna be better. That felt better but like everybody who's probably watching this video, I can do it in here, I can do it in practice sometimes. So what I'm gonna have to do is dedicate some time to the practice and repetitively work on it to make it better. Guys, hit those comments below if you are practicing hard at the minute, if you're actually investing time in your game, or if you're doing like I was expecting to do and just turn up and play well and compete and win. I mean, if you're playing against guys, you can probably do that, but... Um, not Chris. Chris has got the better of me at the minute. Another thing which doesn't help my golf game is my posture. Now, when I had a lesson with Chris Ryan a couple of years ago, or kind of last, last year, a couple of years ago, one of the big things we looked at was my posture. I was too far away from the ball, the hands were too low, and it just wasn't, it wasn't boding well for a very athletic takeaway, for a very athletic backswing. So what I'm going to try and do is work on what me and Chris worked on back then, I'll link that video in this video actually, you can see how much weight I've put on and also how much worse my golf's got. But if I stand what I feel like is too close to the ball, get the handle up here so you can see it's not down there, generally for me that helps me then do a better backswing, a better takeaway in particular. I'm gonna try and do this in two parts, so the handle's higher, I'm gonna try and take the club away with the shoulders a little bit to create some separation. Then from there, I'm gonna work the lower body and get up into the top of the backswing. And what I'm looking for in the mirror that's directly behind me here is a little bit of separation between the knees. So I'm trying to straighten this knee a little bit more. I'm trying not to stay too squatted down. And from there, that's gonna put me in a better position at the top to work down on a half decent kind of movement here, so I'm not gonna to come too far inside. I'm not gonna try and flip it and play a big draw. I'm actually gonna try and pressure the ball on the way down. And just like the lesson I had with Sinjin, 
bit of the beginning of this year, what a lesson that was. I'm gonna try and work the club across my body here. So the handle exits left and the club almost exits out to the right a little bit. So better posture. Guys, what does this look like? That felt so good. I've actually done that a little bit too good. If you look at the, the numbers there on the screen, you can see that the club path was 8.7, which is a little bit too much. We've got a nice high cut. I love the spin rate there at 6.668. I mean, a carry distance of 175, 176 is brilliant. And you see guys, this is almost exactly what I want this practice session to be. And it's exactly what I would want your practice sessions to be as well. I want it to create some confidence. I want it to, kind of trigger some movements and trigger some feelings and some thoughts which I know are going to help me improve my game. Let's have another go at that but let's try and make it maybe not quite as across the ball. Not bad, a little bit toey actually. Again the club path's eight to the left, that is too much for me. I'd rather see that at kind of maybe four degrees, three degrees but, but because I'm working the club face better it's actually just a nice high fade. Actually moving the club quicker as well there, which is always nice. I've definitely lost a little bit of speed since the lockdown. I'm not blaming the lockdown, I'm blaming, I'm blaming the cabbage buttons that I've been eating since it. A lot of people comment on my videos saying that the grip's too strong. Now the grip can be too strong definitely, but if I work a better wrist position here, I quite like having the strong left hand. I can feel like I almost bow it through the shot here. So there's an explanation for that. Let's try and hit another one. Let's try and hit a more straight shot. Again, a toey strike. We've lost some distance, but better uh, swing path. Guys, when you're practicing, who actually thinks about things like this or who just goes and hits balls? I went to the driving range with Foxy the other day. You'll see how even though I'm talking to you, I'm trying to look at it in the mirror here. I went to the driving range with Foxy the other day and literally all I did was smash golf balls take pictures for Instagram and it was the most unproductive practice I've ever done in my life. So uh, definitely going to try and get away from that and get more into actually thinking about what I'm working on. Right, we're going to go a couple more with the irons and then I'm going to look at the driver because the driver is the big one. The driver is the one where that can ruin my round because you can just lose loads and loads of golf balls. I'm going to revisit this without a camera, but I wanted to show you guys what I'm kind of working on and how I'm going to try and get my golf game back to where I want it in 2020. <laughs> no! <sighs> wow. Definitely not finishing on that one. And that's obviously, if you do move your posture closer to the golf ball, that is the potential. You need to make sure that you squat down into that ball, not move towards it. Now we're talking. Right, big dog. This is where, this is where I used to be so confident. It's, it's almost the same as, definitely the tee peg. It's almost the same story as the short game. When I was a junior, I absolutely loved hitting driver, smashing driver. I absolutely loved flop shots and pitch shots and just basically salvaging bad shots. But now, all I see is driver going left a lot of the time on the golf course. And as for the short game, I mean, if you watched my short game Saturday with Chris, the chipping competition, um, I mean, if you didn't, don't worry about it, but it wasn't good. Right, so driver, I'm gonna try the same. Obviously, I'm not gonna try and cut across the driver. I'm gonna try and get spine angle back ever so slightly. When I'm hitting driver well, I'm always hitting up on it. The club path's a little bit to the outside instead of across the ball, or instead of to the left, should I say. Uh, and again, posture's a big thing. So many times I watch my own course vlogs, like this one, and the posture's like that. I'm just like, you can't hit driver from there. And then I try to and it goes left. So similar thing with the hands. I'm not gonna let the club head overtake the hands too much. How's that in the mirror? That looks good actually. Actually not dissatisfied with that. 272 carry, so there or thereabouts, 2200 spin, and it's not gone left. Yes. 
kind of felt as it came out of there as well, which is annoying. Guys, if you haven't hit those comments below already, let me know what you're working on. I am really interested to find out. Hope you are working on something and not just aimlessly hitting balls like me. It's another one which I'm going to take all day. It's not a middle strike, but that as a ball flight is nice. I like it. can tell it's not a middle strike by the smash factor as well. 1.42 with a driver is rubbish. Higher as well, interestingly. Time is it? My teen off soon? 10 minutes to tee off, 10 minutes to tee off. We're gonna hit a couple more drives, but I really feel like, to be honest, I feel like this video has probably helped me, hopefully as much or more than it's helped you because I'm actually talking through what I need to do. And I'm actually making myself accountable for a productive practice session. So if you have enjoyed this guys, make sure you do let me know, make sure you hit those comments below. And if you want me to carry on doing stuff like this, if you want me to carry on talking you through a brutally honest version of my golf game, then let me know. Let me know. Hit the comments below. What have I dropped then? I'll drop something. Right. Really trying not to put any movement on this. I'm just trying to launch it fairly straight. I mean, that's the one that I've been missing for so long. That's carried about 10 yards further than I have been carrying it. And the club head speed's up two miles an hour, three miles an hour on average. Ball speeds rocketed up by about six miles an hour. I know what some of you are saying. It's gone left, it's gone left. That's not left. That's not left. I'll show you left. Not in this video, hopefully, but definitely take a few of them in the game that I'm going to play later. That's left. Oh, no. I'll show you left, that's left, and that's me getting overexcited because I've hit a good one. No! No! Right, so as a penalty for that, I'm not leaving this mat, well, this room, until I hit three, not necessarily big drives or long drives, but three what I feel like is productive golf swings because that was just silly again. I got over, over in, in the moment, overindulged in the moment. Come on, posture good, alignment good, setup good, and away. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. Who enjoys practice as well? Almost on the line, almost on the line. I can tell when it's a better swing and it's a faster swing because I feel as though there's a lag in the downswing. Does anybody else get that as well? Come on, posture good, alignment good, setup good, and away. It's another one. That's another one. And you see, the biggest thing I'm going to take from this practice session, I think, it's almost that little pre-swing check. It's like a pre-flight -pre check that a pilot might do. I'm, I'm sort of uttering to myself, muttering to myself, whispering to myself, come on, set up good, alignment good, making sure I'm not aiming right or left, making sure my shoulders aren't massively closed because that's going to make me want to flip it from the inside. And then with the mirror behind me, just making sure the posture's good and then go. And again, that's not the best one, but if it's on the golf course, it's not causing me any harm. Guys, what do we think? I really hope you've kind of enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a nice, productive 20 minutes and 40 seconds. Hopefully I'll chop this down into a 10, 15 minute video for you and you'll find it a little bit helpful. You'll enjoy it. You'll find a little bit of humor in it. But mainly I just want to get my golf game back to where it should be. So if you have enjoyed it, guys, let me know. Hit that like button as well, so I know that you're enjoying it. If you haven't subscribed already, come on, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. 
Uh, and apart from that, guys, quarantine. So there's always that, isn't there? See you tomorrow. <laughs>